Don't work harder, work smarter. Hey everybody, this is Ray Stendhal, publisher of Customer Engagement Magazine and the author of the Customer Engagement Manifesto. I'm so happy you're with us and as part of this important video series. In this video, you're going to discover why, according to Deming, it's more important to focus on statistical analysis of results achieved than to look at numerical results in absolute on their own. So this principle is all about eliminating work standards and numerical quotas. I have to be honest with you, there's a portion of me here which is not exactly on the same page with Deming. I think there is a lot of what he's saying is important, uh, but there's a part that I don't quite totally agree with. So we're going to talk about that too in this in this uh, video. So first, let's let's focus on what it is that I do agree with what what he's saying here. Well, when we think about the production of products and services to an end customer, if we are only concerned with uh, from a manufacturing standpoint with the output, the number of widgets produced in an hour, in a shift, in a workday, and that becomes our central focus, the effect of our work, the quote-unquote results, and focus only on the quantifiable aspect in terms of numbers produced, then that really does us a disservice because now there's a lot of pressure on the team to produce that numerical output and that then starts to overshadow the quality of the output. So it's important to realize that in some circumstances and in some days, your quantity will be lower than expected, but the quality should always be what's expected. And, um, and if it's not, then we need to look at the systems, the processes, and the methodologies that are used to drive that quality so that it can be improved. So on that side of the equation, I agree. I also agree that if you reach a certain goal in something like quality, and that's the focus, then you start to coast. And you're like, okay, we hit our quality number. We can now just like rest on our morals and be complacent and not get any better. The truth of the matter is, is that there are companies that refuse to be complacent. Every day and every way, they keep focusing on getting better and better and better. So it's not so much about reaching a goal, it's about the never-ending process of the journey to get closer and closer to it. And that part I really want to drive for you, that you cannot get complacent in the production, the marketing, the sales, and the support of our solutions in the marketplace. There's always a better way to educate a customer from a marketing standpoint. There's always more compelling content that we can create. There's always a better way that we can refine the way we engage with people as part of our sales process. And there's always new and better ways in which we can create tools for our customers to make the support and the value transfer easier to understand and potentially even avoid having a call being made into the company. Now, keep in mind, I use the word avoid in a positive sense. If somebody wants to talk to you and is your customer, by all means, welcome the opportunity to talk to your customer. But many times we are in a self-service sense in a, in a world where people want to solve problems on their own as customers and if they don't have to make a phone call, that is what they want and that's what we should want for them. So from this perspective, completely on page with, with Deming and uh, I think all of these are important ideas and there's some definitely some clear action items we're going to talk about at the end of this video. Now, you might be asking me then, what is it that I'm not quite on the same page with Deming about? Well, let's read the principle again. Eliminate work standards and numerical quotas. Well, we've talked about the numerical quotas perspective. However, I think that human beings are goal-oriented individuals. And as goal-oriented individuals, there is a quality and a quantity component to the nature of our work. So if we do not have any guidelines for our expectations for what it is that we are to accomplish on both the quality and the quantity, there can be a tendency then if we take this concept too far to focus 100% on the quality and have very little quantity. So what, that, what might that look like? Well, let's suppose we're in a marketing sphere and we're making videos that can help our customers better understand what we do 
and uh, help educate them. If we put all our effort into creating just one video that's four minutes long, that is amazing, has all this great post-production work in it, all this whiz bangy type of stuff, and by definition of what we, what we think our customer wants, what we know our customer wants, they would consider that a high quality video with great content, and that's it. Would that be sufficient? Or would it be sufficient to have an appropriate level of quality and produce 30 videos that approach the subject from a variety of different angles and give the customer what they need to make an informed buying decision? So that's an example of quality versus quantity. There always must be a base level of quality and we must always strive to improve that quality, but we have to have obviously the appropriate quantity to make sense. Now, the part about eliminating work standards. Well, I don't know. From my perspective, I think that there is there are many work processes that we can point to and say this is the right way of doing things and this is the wrong way wrong way of doing things. That that doesn't mean that the right way of doing things cannot be enhanced. What it means is that there is a protocol of how we go about doing our work. So from my perspective, I'm going to say that <clears throat> eliminating work standards and numerical quotas altogether, I don't think is the right way of doing things. What I do think is important is making sure that the quality aspect of the production, the marketing, the sales, and the support is well entrenched into the goal, but there has to be some quantifiable measurements for what expectations we have of our production facilities, as well as the work standards that we have in place for how we define quality and as we execute processes to, to add value to customers. So I hope I clarified this a little bit. I welcome your feedback, especially if, if you have studied Deming and you've studied this principle and you have a different take on what Deming meant by this. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, now let's talk about what the call to action is. Remember, we started this video series with me suggesting to you that you have a pen and paper out so that you can take note of action items along the way. So here's what I want you to do. Is ask yourself, how do you measure your results? Now, some of you out in our audience is going to say, well, it's very simple. I measure my results based on my bank account. How much money did I generate? That's one measurement, absolutely. But do keep in mind that that single measurement over a long enough period of time can certainly be substantial because customers won't come back to you if you don't have quality products and services, but in isolation as a single number may not give you the complete story. You, that is an effect of your causes, but you also need to understand and look at the causes that are driving those effects. So take a look at how do you measure your results? If you're looking at marketing, how are you measuring your influence in the marketplace? How are you measuring your ability to convert somebody who has no idea that you exist into a qualified prospect? What is your process to go through? What are the steps that the, the prospect must go through to uh, be in a place where they are willing and interested to listen to what you have to talk about? From a sales standpoint, how are you breaking down the ratios between each step within your sales process? We talked about your documenting your sales process in a previous video. So these are some things that I think you can tactfully go to and work on as a result of watching these videos so far. And then I want you to ask yourself the question, how am I tracking improvement? Uh, and how are you sharing that information with the appropriate stakeholders so that everybody is on the same page? I'll give you a tangible example here. Let's suppose that you are in a B2B sales scenario and you are calling on a prospect. You should have a pretty good idea of how many uh, times you need to visit a prospect and how many people you need to talk to in order to go from somebody who you have a first encounter with to somebody who is willing to purchase your solution. You should have a pretty good idea of what that benchmark looks like so you understand what the inputs are required to generate an output. You should be keeping track of the different pieces of feedback that a prospect provides to you indicating that your solution might not be the right fit for them so that you know how to respond to that feedback in a way that helps illuminate the positive aspects of your solution if in fact there is indeed a fit with your customer. So these are different things that I want to recommend that you do. There's a whole lot more that I could share with you, but for now I think this is enough to get you going. Uh, we really hope you enjoyed this video along with all our other ones. We're putting a lot of effort into creating this content for you 
fair amount of research went into this process. We enjoy making these videos for you. And if you enjoy watching it and learning something from them, please comment and share. Talk back to us. Make this a conversation, not a lecture. And do your best to share the message because the more that we can get people in different organizations to hear this message and start to challenge the way they do business, the more we can really take hold of and owning the process of improving our businesses and the economy at large. So please comment and share. And in our next video, we're going to go over the 12th of the 14th principles, which is permit pride of workmanship. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And until then, this is Ray Stendhal signing off.